Welcome back. Our next guest is, I have no words, he is the king of experiences, as I would put it. Steve Sims is the creator of Bluefish, a company that gets stuff done at the most incredible levels, and I'll let him tell you all the rest about it himself. So Steve, welcome and thanks for being here. I'm very excited, thank you. We're excited to have you. So we met, I think we all met at the same event, and learned that you were really the person who creates luxury experiences for people who have a dream that they don't even think can happen. How does that work? Yeah, I'm the guy that people come to when they have a uh, when they have a, a fantasy or a dream, or they've seen something on TV and they want to create. Um, but it's kind of funny because nine times out of ten, when people talk to you about their dreams, they kind of dilute it a little bit. So they may want to do this with a with a, a rock band, or they may want to do this in a castle, and they'll think about it. And you know, in the, in the in the early morning, they'll think it's a great idea. But by the time it gets to you, they've kind of dulled it down a little bit. So it's our job to get back in there and go, well, hang on a minute. You know, you had this idea, but where did it come from? Let's get back to that big one. You think and, they become uh, afraid of it? Is that? I think they do. I think people are vulnerable of feeling stupid, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a sad thing. You know, you can ask someone mm -hmm. how much money you got in your bank account, what's your religion, how tall are you, mm -hmm. and s some of those questions may make people. My wife's five foot four, but she tells everyone she's five foot five. You know, but <laughs> there's these. Kind of, she's going to kill me for that. But um, a lot of people are kind of like scared about revealing that their actual dream, uh -huh. their actual passion. So part of the fun of the job is you become a therapist. Um, and because of the many things that we've done over the years, we kind of get a lot more done than most people do. So this is clearly your passion, and you've recently written it into a book for anybody who hasn't had the experience yet that they can actually learn more about blue fishing. But how did you develop your passion? Um, it was strange. I couldn't find a passion. And I was actually a bricklayer from East London, ended up in Hong Kong, ended up working on the door for nightclubs. Um, and then I ended up throwing a few parties here and there just to get some extra money. Um, but I was trying to find my passion. I was the Irish kid in London that wanted to find what I was good at. And I, I couldn't. But then I found that I was really good and capable at getting someone else's thing. Mm -hmm. And so my, my passion and my gift became being able to add up two and two and giving you your four. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've got to admit, my drug of choice is allowing someone's passion to, to, to really explode. And I, I really enjoy just seeing someone come to me and say, hey, we want to we want to do something in Florence. We want to do something, you know, in, in Tokyo and then me doing and just seeing them have that passion, have that dream. You know, I really, uh, really get very excited about that. Tell us about some of these experiences, like the ones that you have created already. Well, we've got 23 years and probably only about five minutes. Yeah. So it's uh, <laughs> pick one or two. Yeah, um, we had a client that wanted to have a, a dinner in uh, Italy, Florence and uh, his whole parameter to us was that he wanted to have this exclusive dinner. Um, we actually took over the Academia Museum that houses Michelangelo's David, set up a table of six at the bottom, and then halfway through dinner we had Andrea Bocelli come in and serenade him as the local, as the local talent. That, but he, that um, is my dream also. It's amazing. <laughs> it Sorry, was phenomenal. Sorry, know him. Oh, yeah. but, but this person didn't even, that wasn't even his dream. You actually had to excavate the dream. Well, didn't his you? dream was that he wanted to have an exclusive dinner in Florence. And if anyone's ever been to Florence, the whole point of Tuscan living is that you go into a restaurant, by the end of the, rest, by the, end of the night, you kind of know everyone in there. Yeah. Right. So it's not like going to New York where you knock on a door and it's a private thing and no one talks to you. It's not that kind of feeling. That's what mm -hmm. Tuscan life's all mm -hmm. about. It's the complete opposite to that. So we had to create something to meet his perception, his dream, and he's a very private person. So sticking him in one of the great, you know, restaurants of Florence, you know, where everyone's going to start talking to him would have would have kind of like thrown him out. Yeah. So we had to create something he wanted, and then give him that exclusive mm -hmm. last minute flair, which was Andre Andrea Bocelli, Bocelli. Yeah. as an as an afterthought. Right? <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty cool. Couldn't get any better. I in, mean, you would have just a, like a just a cornucopia of senses during that. You know, you've got. Yeah. The, the food and you've got the experience and you've got the visual of the David and then <laughs> the, the music. It, it was it was amazing and that's where you know I would have never thought of that. Mm -hmm. It was only the fact that I was given that challenge mm -hmm. that made me go okay and as you mentioned in your commentary earlier 
how far can I take this? Mm -hmm. And when someone wanted an exclusive meal in, in Florence, you know, I love Florence, but I was like, well, the uh, Diamo, uh, Palazzo di Vecchio, those are great places, but to a lot of people, you wouldn't recognize them. Mm -hmm. There's very few people in the world that don't recognize David. <laughs> There's many people right. that have probably never heard of Academia yeah. uh, as the museum that houses it, but there's very few people that don't know David. Right. So having a dinner at the feet of the most iconic statue in the planet and then being serenaded by the most iconic Italian singer still alive was kind of taking it as far. I think that's probably safe to say that's as far as I could take a Florence restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I think so. When he wants an exclusive dinner, that's what comes out. Okay, so but everything Steve, is I would like to have an exclusive evening um, watching TV. How far can you take that? <laughs> well, you, you could you could put the TV on the International Space Station and See, stick there you there. Go. So it's it's really how far how far you're willing to go, yes. how far your checkbook will take right. you, and uh, what doors we can open up along the way. Oh, that's so exciting! But I think the things you talk about in your book: number one, money is never the issue. Meaning, no. if there's if someone's coming to it's you, it's never that the big, lead. It's never the lead, but it's also if someone's coming to you with that big a dream there's got to be some amount of money that's mm -hmm. that can support some aspect of what you're doing and the bigger piece is that it has nothing to do with I, iq it has everything to do with i can and your unwillingness to say i can't so mm -hmm. if you are willing to say i can mm -hmm. to everything it opens up a whole new way of thinking doesn't it i'm the poster child for that um I finished school and the day after school at the age of 15 was working on a building site. Wow. So I class myself now as an educated man, but school had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, I just couldn't believe that while so many people were giving themselves 20 reasons why they can't do something, they weren't actually giving them one why they should. Mm -hmm. And I, it just didn't make sense to me. I, didn't, I couldn't fathom the fear of why they weren't trying these things. Um, and before I woke up to that fear of, of why they were scared or didn't want to be humiliated, I was already doing some good things, so I was already in my momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once you get started, flow yeah, is the thing. That absolutely, and one thing I remembered from our conversation last year, it's been an entire year since oh. I've talked with you and oh. I remember it so well. <laughs> Another thing I, that was very uh, amazing to me and it, along the lines with this I can was that you ran into some roadblocks trying to get the phone number and you had to call up the office of the Pope, is that right? Yeah, um, the, uh, well it was actually Andrea Bocelli, mm -hmm. I spoke to the manager. Mm -hmm. Now we're in California so I don't want to be too horrible about managers, but managers are there to basically say no or charge you three times what you're offering. Mm -hmm. That's their job. Uh, and there's all these managers out there going, oh, well, you know they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I got one of those and I had, uh, I had um, two days, so like 48 hours, to get, we'd already got the academia, we already had that. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like, well, what can we do now? And that's mm -hmm. when the whole entertainment thing came in. We actually already had another singer booked, but I just thought, I wonder if we could bump in for someone better. And I shot <laughs> for the stars and I got Andrea. But when we got hold of the manager, and I said, two days time, is he in, is he in Florence? Because I know he lives in Tuscany. Can we have him serenade our clients at a dinner in the academia? The person on the other end of the phone went, yeah, okay. Will get back to you and hung up. Didn't take my name, didn't take my email, wow. didn't take my phone number. Mm. Now, I'd had another set of clients that had asked to get married in the Vatican and blessed by the Pope. So I thought, well, if you're looking for a powerful phone call in Italy, <laughs> maybe they can do it. So I phoned up the Vatican and I said, have you ever had any correspondence with Andrea Bocelli before? And uh, they said, yes, we have. And I said, you couldn't do me a favor, could you? Could you make a phone call and just let her know I'm real? And what I'd like to do with them, and they're like, certainly. So I believe it's a, it's a really valuable uh, point that's, that's stressed throughout the book. Cherish, nurture, and fuel your relationships. Yes. Because those are the stepping stones to get in other strong relationships. And if you're good with one person, then that person can help you open the door for another person. That's exactly what they did. They made a phone call, and I got a phone call back going, would you like 8 o'clock or would you like 9 o'clock? Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Brilliant. That's beautiful. What a great lesson for all of us yeah. to learn about that. Always nurture your relationships. Don't say I can't. Is there anything else that you would recommend as kind of final parting words? Um, forget email. 
Oh, if really? you, yeah, forget email. Just just try it. I know you can't. It's like saying you can't have fuel in the car, you know, unless you're driving a Tesla now. But um, I, I try to get people to kind of like ignore emails because what happens is you become very creative on all the other ways to communicate with mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. We've relied on email now. So you end up getting 2,000 emails in your email box right. and you sat there with your coffee in the morning just doing delete, delete, delete. And mm -hmm. how many times do you delete? an email that you really should have read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it's ended up in junk for a week and by that time you forgot the flow of conversation. But if you just ignore the email, and we do it quite regularly uh, within my company and within my life, ignore it for a while and just try the different other ways. SMS video in, this really freaky thing called phoning someone, <laughs> you know, sending <laughs> someone a letter, sending someone a book, but try all the other mm. things. Even phoning someone up and go, hey, I'm in your area, should we grab a coffee at three o'clock? Are you okay with that? Just try any other way other than an email. It builds that relationship and that's, that's really the only thing you can't download as an app, relationships. Oh, wow. So that is how can people find you? find me okay, um, so you're, you're well, if, they, if they really want to um, so i have uh, the bluefish.com is right. the uh, the luxury concierge firm that we're well known for the titanic and all the other things that we mentioned about but um i also have steve d sims which is my kind of a little bit more raw gritty uh response and rants on what i think people should be doing how you should brand yourself how you should build up relationships so for the entrepreneurial community which let's be honest is ageless you know yeah, you've got absolutely. eight year olds and you've got 80 year olds uh, right. that are entrepreneurs so that's a great community that's where i go on there and i go do you know i love this advert and this is why i like it or i don't believe in this and this is why i believe it. so this is where mm. i am it so that's steve d sims and those are the ones you bring to us from your man cave in your garage with your yes. motorcycles right <laughs> yes i yeah. do i like to just get a uh, i like to just hit the video button when i'm in the garage <laughs> and just go off on one on why I, uh, why I like this and why I don't like that. Well, we're thrilled to have you and thank you so much for sharing. I hope we can bring you back next time and talk about <laughs> more you. of your exciting adventures. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>